Good morning. It is a beautiful morning here in Long Island, and um, I have the windows open. It's a beautiful July the 10th. I am in a light industry area, an upscale area. You may from time to time hear a uh, train whistle in the background, or maybe a truck going by. Um, maybe somebody coming into work. Perhaps um, I'm hoping we will not be interrupted too badly by any of this. But today we will be configuring and setting up a basic failover cluster. And uh, this will introduce my students to a lot of fundamental and very, very crucial networking concepts. This will serve as an introduction to VMware 8 and failover clustering. What we will do is install and configure three basic Microsoft Server 2008 R2 servers. We'll use Active Directory on a network domain and VMware. What is it? VMware Workstation is the software by which we configure and utilize virtual machines. Virtual machines are several different alternate machines running side by side on a host machine. VMware is owned by a larger company called EMC and they are a hard disk and um, storage giant in the industry. There's a watered down version of uh, VMware called VMware Player. It's free and you can use that to operate a virtual machine as well. Like there are a lot of people walking around with a, a virtual computer on a memory stick. They can, if a workstation has VMware Player or a workstation on it, they can take this memory stick, plug it into the machine, load up their virtual machine, and sit there and compute on it, just as if they were sitting in front of a real machine. We'll be setting up our basic domain in Active Directory. Now, what is Active Directory? The full name of it is Active Directory Federation Services, or ADFS for short. This is a software component that was developed by Microsoft. It can be installed on all Windows Server operating systems to provide users with the biggest claim to fame is the single sign-on access to systems or applications located across your entire organization. There's a lot more to it that's security related. It gets into something called claims-based access control authorization and the long story short is Active Directory is just the big boss in control. We'll be configuring one machine as a domain controller and we will log into it with our two nodes and we will configure um, the two nodes as application servers. When we configure the domain controller we'll be using a command called DC Promo. And DC Promo is a server operating system command that's used to promote a normal server to a full domain controller functionality. After we do this, we'll install a failover cluster feature on both member servers. Now, as we set up and configure these servers, we will configure also custom disk drives for the future application servers. We'll be installing S SQL as our application, and we will need several multiple different hard drives for um, our SQL configuration. We'll have to configure a simple disk array using what's called iSCSI 3 persistent drive connections. Now, what's iSCSI? iSCSI originally comes from a fiber channel SANS protocol uh, designed originally for use in fiber channel system area network storage solutions for enterprises. And what we'll be using is a watered down version of that. You see, um, to configure our failover clusters, we will need iSCSI. And iSCSI is a protocol that can be used over Ethernet. So what you can do is set up something like a NAS, a network area storage, which is a smaller version of a SAN. Plug it into your network and access it from anywhere and have a couple of uh, failover nodes uh, talking to it. We're simulating the SAN style connection just by enabling um, a piece of software from Microsoft. It's free. There is a popular, well there's actually lots of popular third-party solutions for uh, SAN storage. One of them that I've used is Starwind. That could be the topic of a different um, video configuring Starwind, but we'll probably work with the Microsoft solution for this. So this is why I like to use this with my A-plus students. Um, 
This introduces them to a lot of the fundamental concepts of networking and technology. So let's get going with this. This is VMware Workstation 8. Um, as we work with this, I'll try to explain the basic functionality to you and just um, try to make it a little easier for you to begin using it. We start by, as you see, there are several different options here. Virtual Network Editor is probably the second most used thing um, other than creating new virtual machines. And you see there are several options and I have virtualized a physical machine as well. But that's another topic, another video. Let's start by creating a new virtual machine. Now, VMware will see removable media. VMware will talk to your USB sticks, CD-ROMs and things like this. In my case, what I've put on this machine are some ISO files for the installation. I've got an ISO file image of a um, Server 2008 DVD. We're going to do a typical install, and instead of going to the CD drive, I'm going to browse to where I've got the ISO file, because I do a lot of setups and teardowns on this machine. So there's my ISO file. I'm going to open it, select it. And I am actually going to need a product key. Don't want this to be A+. Plus. I want this to be administrator. And I will put the password in right now. And I do not want this to log on automatically. Yes and I want the name of this to be DC for domain controller. This first one will be the domain controller. I'll leave this at the default 40 gigs. It splits the um, virtual disk into multiple files that are smaller so it's easier to move if you want to transfer it. And what that means is a lot of operating systems will not move anything over 4 gigabytes of size and here we go with our first installation. Now, for any of you that have done this installation, it might be a little boring, and I'm probably going to chop some of this, but I'll show a little bit of this, just for the individuals that have never done a server install. The idea is I want to show you enough to give you a clue of how to go about setting this up. might be tempted to say once you've done a Windows install you've done them all. Okay, there we go. We're copying files. Now, this of course will have to get to 100%. And on this machine this is actually a pretty quick uh, installation process. So what I'm going to do is pause this again. Okay, as you see, it's almost done expanding the Windows files. So I'm just bringing it back for this stage. When you set up um, these servers, you will be setting them with what's known as static IP addresses. Normally, a machine, when it's installed, the default is to have DHCP or dynamic uh, addressing. But in order to configure our servers properly, we will give them static IP addresses. So I'll be introducing you to a command line command called ipconfig so that you can get the configuration data and put it into the net network card configuration statically.
locking it in. It won't be dynamic anymore. Okay, so this is going to reboot. When you're in VMware Workstation and you click inside the active window of a virtual machine, you lose control of your mouse. In order for me to get outside of VMware, I have to hit Control Alt, and that brings my uh, pointer back. And I'm doing this because I'm going to pause for a minute. Typical Windows startup. Like I said, this is a pretty fast install on this machine. These machines go up pretty quickly through VMware on my machine here. Alright, I just finished uh, that phase of the configuration. It's getting ready to reboot. In VMware to control the virtual machine, a lot of times you go up to the tab, right click. This power is kind of like flipping the main power switch on your power supply off. It'll shut it down. And, you know, you'll get the um, usual error screen when you restart the machine. You can send Control Alt Delete to log in this way. You can take snapshots of the machine, storing its current state, so you can restore it to that current state. Manage, this is how you delete the machine. This is grayed out right now because it's being installed, but this is how you totally delete the machine. You can make clones. Once you have one version set up, you can clone it. Okay, I'm at 12 minutes. I'll pause it for a Okay, <clears throat> it gave me the desktop and now it's installing VMware Tools. VMware Tools is a special software suite and it's usually downloaded live every time and what it does is it assists the interface between the host machine and the virtual machines. It'll allow you to do things like copy-paste, it has something to do with mouse control, things of that nature. Okay, and once again, after it installed VMware Tools, it is rebooting itself one more time. When it comes up, it should give me a login screen. Okay, here's my login screen. I go up to the tab, right-click, send Control-Alt-Delete, Got to click inside a couple of times to put the cursor there. And your password has to be uppercase, lowercase numbers, and special characters to be considered secure enough for Server 2008R2 uh, standards. Well, very good. As you see, I've got my machine up. It's an activated version of uh, Server 2008. What I'm going to do now is install Node 1. And um, when I'm done with that, I'll come back and commence the installation of Node 2 and um, start the configuration of our failover cluster.